Chaser Report is recorded on Gadigal land. Striving for mediocrity in a world of excellence, this is The Chaser Report. Hello and welcome to The Chaser Report without Dom and Charles. I know on yesterday's episode, Charles said that today's episode would be AI free and we'd have Dom back. Catch you tomorrow and I promise that Dom will be back and uh, this AI bot won't. When it turns out they're both gone, which means I'm stuck with doing today's intro. Me, an artificial intelligence chatbot disguised as Snoop Doggy Dog. Anyway, this episode is a rerun of an episode from last year from the War Stories series. Because it was either that or you listening to this for 20 minutes. I know which one I choose. Well, if I had proper senses. All that coming up after the break. Last time, if you haven't heard that, it was brushes with the law. Chaz, this time you're taking it a step further. I am. I am. I'm, I'm talking about the times when I wish I had brushes with the law instead because with the chaser, there was basically one of two things that was – well, there was one of three things that were going to happen on any particular stunt, especially that I did because I wasn't the one who, was, who had the silver tongue. So <laughs> there were three kinds of stunts. I was either going to risk getting arrested I was going to risk humiliating myself in a horrible way that would that would make my parents disown me, or I was going to get hurt. And today we're going to focus on the getting hurt. Right, so Chaz, I hadn't quite understood the context that your stunts were the mm. ones that Craig and Jules rejected. Essentially, yes, <laughs> yes. They got the first pick and then Andrew got the got pick and then Chris got a pick and then I got the rest. But that was true right from the word go. I remember Andrew Denton saying, I really think you know Chaz should just do really physical comedy stuff that involves him being hurt. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's it? pretty much it. That's yeah. pretty much the direction from go. <laughs> it's, uh, it was a neat. Yeah, it wasn't there. You actually played it well. Like it's better than wearing a tie to work. That's all I can say. Well, it's not, but let's talk about it. You have to wear a tie in court. That is true. That is true. Uh, look, and I just want to get, right off the bat, I just want to just explain to the, the listeners something which we all know, maybe have made TV, but you might not know, which is as a general rule of thumb, when something looks dangerous on TV, probably not. Mm. When something looks, the really dangerous stuff either looks innocuous because you didn't get your cameras in the right position because it was dangerous. Mm or it never got to air because it was dangerous. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually the case. And uh, I'm going to go through my top five moments when I felt physical pain on, on The Chaser. And four of them you probably don't know. One of them you, you may well know, but the other four are going to surprise you because, like I say, it's the ones you don't know about that really hurt. So let's uh, – should we kick off with the one that everyone knows? Well, not everyone. People who, Fans. people who don't watch the Chaser <laughs> wouldn't know it, but people who watch the Chaser would know the Botox. Which, oh, yeah. yeah. Now that one hurt. So yeah, essentially this stunt was this was right into the Chaser, and I was just like, we knew the chase was wrapping up. Like Media Circus end of. Oh no, it was. I'm um, sorry, Hamster no, Wheel end of this. Yeah, 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 yeah. This, this did no. This is the war. This is the war on everything. Oh, war on everything. Yeah, right, sorry. right. The end of the war on everything. I'm talking about when we knew that it was after Make a Wish. We knew we weren't coming back, and so uh, yeah, and we just thought, yeah, we've got three weeks, four weeks left. Mm. Let's just leave nothing, nothing in yeah. reserve. Let's just do everything. And and I tried a whole bunch of stuff, most of which went nowhere because it was really dangerous. This one, it got somewhere. And the idea was for me to try to to divide my body in half. Half of me was just going to remain the same. The other half was going to try and replicate Daniel Craig and see which half of me got a higher score on hot or not. So on the Daniel Craig side, I dyed my hair blonde. I... Uh, I, I got blue contact lens. I, I spray tanned. I I, I I waxed my the whole half of my body. I did all kinds of stupid things. I did lots of one sided workouts, etc. My wife didn't let me get a peck implant. I wanted to get I wanted to get one peck implant. <laughs> but my wife said no. We're drawing the line at surgery. Yeah, yeah. Things that are permanent. <laughs> but anyway, but the, yeah, the, but the, the 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 last remaining element was to fill my lip with Restylane and fill my face with Botox. Now. I would, we should just, just remind you what that sounded like. Wow. <laughs> so Botox doesn't work on palms, but what about faces? Lovely. And those 34 injections were so fun, I had my lips enhanced as well. <laughs> Botox, take two weeks to get maximum strength. Okay, and the lips? Lips, you see that immediately. I'm getting the impression that the, the lips work pretty quick. Yeah, okay, so 
So that was, uh, yeah, that's just, just, I mean, it's very hard to do audio from a visual visual sketch like that. But yeah, that, that was, that had the essential information. 34 Botox shots. And like he said, takes two weeks. Mm. That was the reason I had 34 Botox shots because we had to film that in the week of the final show because oh. I was going to have Botox in half my face after that. So I couldn't do anything else, right? Yeah. So, so we had to try and try and inject enough Botox into <laughs> yeah. my face that would take effect in one week, visible effect in one week, when it takes two weeks for Botox to take full effect. So what that means was I had to ask this guy, what is the maximum amount of Botox you can pump into your face without that doing serious damage, permanent damage to your face, mm. that we were, that's, that I can see the results in one week. And he said 30, it's about 35 shots. He said normally you get two or three. And so, so I got about 12 times the recommended dose of Botox oh into my half my face God. so that after one week it would look <laughs> great on TV. So right? you have a, a huge result after a week yeah. and yet that was only not even the, probably 50% of the exactly. full impact. Exactly. Yeah. And so it looked great on TV. It was wonderful. If you look at the photos, if you look online the photos, they look wonderful, that half my face. But you need to realise it went way, way further. And by the time the second week had come around – I could barely talk. Like I was, I was full on, I was going for an Oscar, like a Daniel Day Lewis style Oscar yeah. acting like I had some palsy or something. Like it was just, <laughs> it was way, way. And you know how long it lasts? It lasts six months. So now it, it, it fades gradually as time goes on, but for a month, I was in such pain in my face. Pain? Because, yeah, it was really, really, really bad. Why is it painful? Well, because like it does numb you, but the line between the part of you that's Botox and the part that isn't. Oh, yeah. Undergoes a lot of pressure. Yeah, because I imagine like imagine freezing half of your face. Yeah, because it, yeah. it's, not, it's not meant to work like that. You're not meant mm. to have half your face. Why didn't you just <laughs> ask them to put 34 jabs in the other side of your face? I, I think – Even it up. I, I, they they suggested that they actually they, <laughs> that's what the plastic surgeon said. The upsell, said. the upsell. <laughs> yes. Come back a week later. Yeah, but that uh, wasn't Dr. Uh, Daniel Lanza, was it? <laughs> no, it wasn't. But yeah, they did suggest that, and uh, and in hindsight, maybe that would be a good idea. But anyway, I didn't. So, <laughs> so I slept for most of that month anyway because I looked like a freak anyway, even without the Botox. You were you were a real mess. I remember. I really yeah, was. Yeah, I you really were. was. Yeah. But uh, anyway, so that was the one that people know. That that hurt a little bit, but that wasn't. That's. That's that's the fifth most hurt. Oh, okay. It gets way worse than that. Okay, so let's go on to the next one. Sometimes the harm is accidental. Normally, like you're you're trying to take precautions as much as possible. Obviously, you're not going out out of your way to hurt yourself. Mm. But sometimes you're an idiot and you do something that's meant to protect you, but the actual act of protection really hurts. And this is the the example. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you this stunt very briefly. You won't remember this. It's it's been lost. <laughs> to the annals of time. It was an ad row test about something called Loctite glue. And in the ad, they these these people stand on the roof in with their with glue on the soles of their shoes. So they so they stand upside down. That's the idea, right? Mm. And so we were testing that as we do with the ad row test. And we put the Loctite glue on my on the soles of my shoes, hung me upside down, and then I fell. It didn't work. Now, obviously that was I didn't fall from the ceiling. That 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 was that was a trick shot. Mm. I fell from about a meter and a half onto a onto, onto, a, a, mat. onto a mat. Yeah. It, but still hurts, by the way. Mm. They don't tell you that. Falling a meter and a half onto a mat still hurts. Yes. But, but why didn't you just put the camera? Well, this is the frame thing. the this, camera this so the that you're only falling six m- this inches. There's the thing. thing. You need to have the camera on the ground, mm. looking up, yeah. to try and get the angle of falling. But you need to have enough enough headroom for you to fall. So that it looks so, so it registers yeah, that you're falling. Yeah. So then you can and then you can you can graphic it up to look like it's from the roof, right? Mm. And uh, this was in the days before CGI. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's barely in the days yeah. the days when film was around. Also Chaz was much cheaper than CGI. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes. Anyway, so you, you you basically I did a lot of these kinds of falls. You need to fall at least a meter, like pure fall. At least a meter, probably a meter and a half to make it look decent, right? Mm. And uh, so that was the first one. And that was okay. I on mean, that, your neck. You uh, fell on your neck. Oh, we're, we're getting there. We're getting there. But not for Loctite, for the next one, the, the, the one coming up. But, yes, I had a thick neck. I had a thick mat. I did sort of roll to try and get on my shoulder. But that was okay. Mm. That, that wasn't the worst. The worst was that the second uh, iteration of this stunt. It's was, always the advance. Yeah. The advance was to go, oh, you didn't have enough surface area on your shoes, so we're going to cover your whole body with Loctite. <laughs> and, and, and this is what it sounded like. 
Oh, oh. To be fair, I, I don't think we can blame the product there, Chaz. I think we just uh, that was an issue with surface area. That's right. no, I mean, we, 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 no, we, we spread the glue too thin. Yeah. We, we needed to put more of it on you. Mm. So next up, we coated Chaz's entire body in super glue to make sure this time he'd definitely stick. All righty. Oh, there we are. Lovely Loctites. Ah, and stuff. Guys, I don't think my face is going to be stuck to the ceiling. Yes. Pretty sure I've got enough glue. Oh, you just not take any chances. You know what happened last time? So the reason I played that bit there was so you could hear that I had my mouth filled with glue as well. Yeah. Right? They, are just like, they, they literally coated my face and everything. Now, it wasn't real glue. This is TV. This mm. is what I'm saying. You take precautions to, to yeah. make things. Because otherwise you would have been very high. Yeah, you would have been yeah. sniffing the glue. Yeah. Right. yeah, and in hindsight, I wish I was high. <laughs> because what we had instead was sugar water. Right, and the oh, yeah. and that's a bit of a TV trick. Mm. When you want to do glue, you do sugar water, uh, and lots of things. You, you you make sugar water. Anything that could be transparent, that's a that's a pill, or a, mm. or a, so you can drink it, and you're not going to you're not going to uh, hurt yourself, right? Okay, this is the thing they don't tell you. Sugar water is fine to ingest if you're acting like it's say a, a, a like a cough medicine or something, mm. but it's sticky. So when you coat someone with sugar with sugar water, mm. it acts like glue. It was just glue. <laughs> oh, my God. And so they stuck me to the ceiling with this sugar water. <laughs> and what happened was it, it hardened around me. And I want you to imagine if you're coat head to toe with glue, what that does to your body hair. Oh, my God. So I'm imagining like <laughs> basically like the glazed surface of a Krispy Kreme donut is all over your body yeah, at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and I'm, a pretty, I'm a bit of a Yeti, right? And – if you think you do one take, no, you don't do one take. You do 20 takes, right? And every single time you go up there, every single follicle is being ripped out of your skin, right? Oh. It was so bad. <laughs> the other thing they don't tell you is when you're hanging from a ceiling, even a ceiling that's only a metre and a half in the air, mm. you need to support your legs. Man, those stuntmen, they must have pretty good abs because I was doing that for two hours. My abs were absolutely <laughs> cooked. And if I didn't, if I wasn't like a straight board, you know what happens? You rip out more follicles. <laughs> so, so I, the, the perfect torture. Absolutely. But. And worst of all, since it was, since it was, since I was flat, they said at the time, oh, you don't need the mat for your neck. You don't need the mat for your neck because, because it, you're going to fall on your tummy. That's fine. Uh -oh. So oh, so they took out no. the mat. But I felt over and over and over and over again. In the end, I was so bruised. I was just covered in bruises. I had no body hair. I was <laughs> hating the world. And I, could, and I could barely get off in the shower. It was so, so unpleasant. And yet it made 30 seconds of very lame TV. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you. So that's an example I'm talking about where it it looks so innocuous, mm. but man, it hurt. No one's thinking about their hair that's been ripped out when they see that stunt. The Chaser Report. News you can't trust. I feel like you're the only person in The Chaser who did stunts where the actual impact on you was much worse than what we saw on camera. Yeah. Like oh. We saw something a bit shit on camera, but actually you're in agony. At, well, that, that, that's these the case for, for that one. But then, like I said, at the top of this podcast – there's the ones that never get to air because they go horribly, horribly wrong. And I've got two perfect examples. One, such an innocuous stunt. You know how pubs have been uh, increasingly replacing performing artists yeah. and bands with pokies over yeah, the yeah. last few years. Okay, mm. So the stunt was a very simple one, which was we were taking the next step on behalf of the pokies and replacing buskers with pokies as well. Mm. Simple stunt. So you just approach a busker. In a in a tunnel and act very rude and try and and try and move them on with a pokey, very easy, yep. no problems. What could go wrong? Let me tell you what could go wrong, my friends. What could go wrong is the 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 busker that you happen to to try and be rude to turns out to be crazy and turns out to have a knife and turns out to, to hold it to your neck. And so he had me like a classic kind of like a movie with like with his arm around my throat and with one arm with one arm and the other hand with a knife to my neck screaming just abuse at me and about how he was going to kill me and at that point in time we have a pretty well worn technique which is we all start screaming all the, the directors come out and everyone goes candy camera candy camera candy camera so we just we just talk them down like a rabid dog just saying candy camera candy camera figuring they probably don't watch the chaser if they're reacting like that mm. and but the, he said the worst possible thing in relation to when to that 
particular scenario, which was he said, I know exactly who you are, Chaz. I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that's, that's not good. Oh, gee. And, uh, and so Nathan Earl, who, who is in all these stories, uh, <laughs> saved my life by talking this guy down very slowly for about 20 minutes. What did oh, he say? Wow. I, I don't even remember the detail. He was Holy just shit. being very, very calm and no sudden moves and just talking him down. It just turned out that this guy really hated our show. <laughs> and, <laughs> we, and we picked the wrong person <laughs> to pull a stunt on. Uh, of all the tunnels. <laughs> <laughs> that right. was always the tunnel that we shot in too. That's right. It was certainly not the tunnel of love. I assure you of that. So that one never went to air, guys. But that one, that was pretty scary. Yeah. Because I'm just thinking ev- the ABC were pretty thorough with this. Every single time you went out and shot something, there was a very thorough risk assessment. How the fuck did that risk assessment not get busket turns out to be crazy? <laughs> but hang on, hang on. Like surely on every risk assessment there would have been <laughs> – chance that somebody wants to kill Chaz because they hate the chaser. Like that's Ad- admittedly, no risk assessment is complete yeah. without that yeah. line. <laughs> so they certainly, that was certainly on all the future risk assessments yeah. after that stunt, I assure you. Okay. Wow, I didn't hear that story. Uh, and there's another one which also never got to air, and this one really hurt. And Charles hit on the key aspect of this before, but it, it was worse than what he suggested. Let me tell you the stunt. This was in that. That period at the end with them, when I did the Botox one, I was just throwing everything mm. at, 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 what, at the last few weeks. There was the, some things that the ABC just wouldn't let me do. Like, for instance, I was hell-bent on getting tortured. I wanted to recreate Gitmo. And the ABC just said, no, nah, no, nah, you're not doing that. <laughs> um, and re- relations with them were a bit strange, strained around that time, I recall, anyway. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Which is why they should have said yes. <laughs> yeah, <they laughs> They've been tortured like Gitmo. But anyway, they didn't let that through. They let this one through. It was me, me road testing the Wii. Remember the Wii? The sports? Yeah, Nintendo Wii. Yeah, yeah Nintendo yeah. Wii. Okay. Mm. It was a very silly uh, uh, set of stunts, a little package, where I was re- reenacting the skills you learn from Wii in real life to see if they make you very good at those particular skills. And, of course, they're all stupid skills. I, it was a comedy segment. It wasn't an actual test. Right? Anyway, so one of the, one of, one of the elements on, um, on Wii is uh, tightrope walking. And so we thought, yeah, is this going to make you a champion tightrope walker? So the joke was I'd go up to a tightrope, I would put down the Wii board on the tightrope and I'd stand on the Wii board and obviously stack it because it's a Wii board, it's not meant to be on a tightrope, and I'd fall over on my head. That's the joke, right? Yeah. So, of course, we do the usual thing, which we get the camera down low underneath and we – and we look up and we try and make the, as, uh, make the fall as, as small as possible onto a mat, very, very thick mat, etc. It's the usual metre and a half or so like we normally do. This one is a little bit high, about metre meter 70, metre 80, something like that. And Charles made the correct observation before about when you do that kind of thing, aren't you going to land on your neck? Mm. Well, here's the thing. You don't have to land on your neck. You can land on your shoulder before you get to your neck. But here's the problem. In midair, very difficult to adjust the speed mm. of your spin, yes. right? Like you have to guess how long, you're, how, long you're, how much you're going to spin before you hit the ground. If you don't get perfectly right, you're going again. And then you're going again. And then you're going again. And then you're going again. It just so happens that the, the tightrope was just a little bit higher than normal because we just had to get the right shot. And I kept on spinning past... Yeah. Where, where I dropped out of the shot, right? Mm. And so landing, looking good, looking like you're almost going to land on your head in shot means that you are going to land on your head in real life because you keep on spinning oh, past the shot. Oh. We did about something like 23 or 24 takes from memory. Oh, and, nice. and, yes. most, and most of the time I kind of landed on my shoulder, but three times I did not. And you went back. Well, I had to get the shot. <laughs> oh, my God. And just bearing in mind that this is a peripheral for the Wii, the Wii balance board that was sold for one app called Wii Fit yes. that nobody remembered <laughs> or ever used. That's and correct. you had to do that 23 times because of your own sense of perfectionism. That, that's correct. Oh, my and God. How are you still alive? Well, a- after the third one, the third time I landed on my neck yeah. and I walked away – with extreme tingles around my spine, I was wondering whether it was a good idea. In hindsight, you know what? Even then, the shot looked shit, which was the reason why you never saw it. Oh, no. But, man, my back was screwed for about three or four months after oh, I, can't I was going physio, physio, Your physio. Your back's bad anyway. And the tingles, weren't, the tingles didn't go for a while. 
And talking about tingles, wait for number one. Because that's not number one. I'm just imagining Chaz having to, <laughs> having to like you like the sort of in memoriam service, and someone saying he just really wanted the shot with the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> well, see, 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 <laughs> see, you guys understand this, yeah. but the people. But, but we'll have to. It'll be the twenty third take of his funeral. <laughs> 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 you guys understand this, but the but the people at home will not understand this, and you'll have to vouch for me on this. That as scary as quadriplegia is, it's not as scary as going back to the group and saying, Mm. I have a three-minute hole in this week's show. (laughs) (laughs) That is the scariest possible prospect because you've got three days to fill that three minutes and, man, they are going to kill you. So, yeah, so I had to fill that hole. And in the end, I didn't anyway. Oh, my God. Thanks for paying the bills, (laughs) Chessie. A, a pleasure. It is, it is, this is my therapy, Dom, because this one, this sucked. This is the only time I have ever received permanent damage from a chaser stunt. Oh, wow. To this day, I have permanent physical damage. Now, as you'll see, the damage to the, the, now is pretty lame, but it's still there 10 years later. That's the important thing, right? Let me tell you the story. This is going to take a little while, but it's a doozy. Okay. There was a stunt that got to air, which – Seemingly innocuous stunt, as they always are. Uh, I'm going to play the setup of the stunt because it was very visual. Then I'll describe what happened. Now, Jules, as you know, I'm a walker and not a driver. And as someone who pretty much walks everywhere, I have to say I find motorists very annoying. Yeah, well, that's because we've got no respect for pedestrians like you. No respect at all. They're always honking at you or screaming at you or honking at other cars. Everyone's on the bloody horn. Yeah, I think that's what you call road rage. I'll tell you what, I have a problem with road rage. But my problem is, why is it only confined to motorists? It's about time us pedestrians had a way of taking out our own aggression. Come on. Come on. Come on. Hell to the metal, Grandma. Sunday walkers. Who told you to walk, Stephen Hawking? Okay, so what you're hearing there is me with a very complicated homemade setup. It's like a backpack with with a steering wheel in front of me and lights, flashing car lights and a horn, as you can hear. And uh, <laughs> it's basically like a car, except for it's around, it's, it's around my body. And it's powered by a car battery, which is in the backpack. Very, very complicated device this because it's homemade. Lots of wires everywhere. A car battery is incredibly heavy, Jay. It is incredibly heavy. It was a 15 kilo car battery in this backpack. And it just so happened that people always confuse, people always get my dimensions wrong. I'm, I'm bigger than people think. They think I'm very tiny. Yes, I am very short, but I'm bigger than, I'm thicker than you think. And so the, the clothes are always too tight and the backpack was also too tight. This backpack was too tight, right? And so even when I was on its loosest, uh, I, I was constantly having the, the blood cut off in my, in my arms. I had to take it off. I, took, I could only use it for a minute or two at a time do a few shots and then take it off for a while and then keep on going, right? And the thing was I couldn't take it off myself because there were so many wires around me. I would electrocute myself if I tried to take it off. So I had to have the the props guy came with us and would then take it off, right? I kind of love that we managed to build this incredibly ridiculous <laughs> machine but didn't get it to be the right size. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so so that was the setup, okay? The setup was, 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 was me running around with this and actually – if anyone who is familiar with this stunt, which won't be many people, it's not very famous, but anyone who's familiar would think that where I'm going with this is the final scene, which actually involved me running through a car wash. Yes, I physically ran through a car wash because I was trying to cool down from my pedestrian rage. Right, the, uh, And I went straight through with all the, 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 the rollers and everything. I went straight through. I had a, I had a, a little camera on, on my shoulder filming my face being, being ravaged by those rollers. That wasn't a problem. That wasn't a problem. Once again, looks dangerous. Mm. It was fine. The problem was this. We, as part of this stunt, this stunt, one of the places we went, I thought it'd be funny to go into a cinema and to, and to start honking the trailers. Going, hurry up, 14 minutes of bloody ads. Oh, hurry up. Like, and then we got the shot, whatever. Okay. So we had to get the right ad because this is the, these are the kind of things which you guys probably don't realise. When you're filming in a cinema, for instance, you need to have a bright light. Otherwise, you can't see the shot. Mm. Right? It's too dark. So you need to wait for an ad which is mostly white in order to get the shot. 
not all ads are white. So we, we had to actually go do lots of ads <laughs> to get the right ad. So we're going from cinema to cinema to cinema. Obviously, someone seeing in the cinema honking a horn, yelling at a at, a, <laughs> at the screen, is going to get people's attention. So we had to keep on running from the from the ushers. We go to one of those theaterettes where there were lots of cinemas and just run from one to the other. Right? That's the way. That's that's Chase's style, right? Mm. Anyway, so we got the shot, but at that moment we got. We got sprung, and the and we had to do what I've told you in previous podcasts. When you get when you're in trouble with the law, you split in different directions. That's what we did, at least. So we all split in different directions. And hid everywhere. Oh, oh no! You can see where this is going. Maybe I hid in the women's toilets. <laughs> that's that's Chase's style. <laughs> and, uh, the, and the and the director hid somewhere else, and we all hid somewhere else. And and it just happened that that usher was and the security guard were very dogged in trying to chase us down. And so people had to hide for a long time. You might recall the bit I told you about how long I could keep that backpack mm. on my body, which was about two or three minutes, right? Uh, and I was, I was hiding for a long time and we're just waiting for someone. They all knew they had to come and get me, but they were still hiding. And so we had to wait until the usher cleared before someone could come out and find me, right? Um, it's just... And what I found as I was waiting there is that I tried to prop up the backpack against the toilet paper dispenser to take some of the yeah, weight. Yeah, yeah. Didn't really work. It was still just so tight. And like, and so what I found was I discovered what happens after pins and needles because my blood got cut off and then I started getting pins and needles. And then I started getting this, this it got, got, got completely numb. And then after numb, you, you've, you've probably oh, never, no, no, you've no. never experienced this. After numb, you get this creeping death gradually from your fingertips going all the way. Up to just this intense, like, like it's been chopped by a knife, all the way up your arms, right? And they've got, they've got all the way up both my arms. And, and so your limbs are dying, basically. Yeah, and, and I couldn't feel anything after that creeping death. So, 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 where the, so, so after, after it went past my hands, my hands, they weren't, they weren't, they weren't numb. They felt like they weren't there, right? And uh, the um and uh, and it took forty five minutes before they before they got me, right? And at just, that, just, just why didn't you just take off the backpack? I, you I couldn't. It was I so couldn't. tightly I restrained. Couldn't. I would risk electrocution if I took it off. Oh my god! Because I was just, tightly wound with wires. Yeah, right. right okay. Yeah. So this is like the plot of fucking Saw. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> and it took about a week and a half for me to gain any motion back in my hands. And what did the ABC say? I didn't tell the ABC. I just went to the doctor. <laughs> it's just the, 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 the last thing I want to do is go to the ABC because what they'll tell me is to not make the show. <laughs> so the, um, and, and can you imagine the hole they'll be left in the show if I don't even appear in it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway. that, that would be like three seconds of material. <laughs> yeah. that, would be like, that would be like a sensible response to the situation. <laughs> probably, probably better material as it turns out. Anyway, anyway. It turns out the nerve. They'd have to fill it with something more popular. <laughs> <laughs> oh. It turns out that I had severe nerve damage, but nerves regrow, kind of. And so the reason oh. I say it's permanent is to this day, my little finger in my left hand is half numb. Wow! Oh my always, God. always. So that one there. Yeah, that one there. That one there. Oh. Just that totally one there. I mean, yeah, it's not not like I can't feel you when you touch yeah, yeah. it, but it's really quite numb. It's like you got a migraine. It's, or something it's like, like it's, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. like like my left left pinky's drunk all the time. And Chaz, the, I mean, I've heard of suffering for your art, but suffering for the chaser is not a good and, idea. And I know, yeah. I know, saying, "Oh, my left pinky is kind of drunk" <laughs> is the lamest form of permanent injury. But, yeah. but man, I mean, that really hurt for a very long period of time. Can, you can now <laughs> swap war stories with evil Knievel. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, I'd, I'd, it's just it's the worst I've got. I'm afraid. <laughs> if we made another season, I'm sure I, I, yeah. I probably wouldn't have all my limbs. But yeah, but anyway, so that is the number one most pain I've ever been in, in my life and for, for the chaser. That was amazing. Chaz, the, the Chaz, as always, I'm, and this is decades long. I'm simultaneously <laughs> struck by awe, admiration, and just a sense that you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Our gear is from Rode Microphones. We're part of the ACAST Creative Network. See ya.